of you. And within this mihi, I contain a papa. the purpose of which is to connect me to my place, to my ancestors, and indeed to my people. So that you may know that when I greet you, I greet you in my entirety, and I meet you in your entirety. Yes, I'm one of the 4% of New Zealand who can speak fluent Reo Māori. And what I love about this language is its richness and depth. Let's examine the question, who am I? The way I ask this is by using the words ko wai o. Now what I love about this question is that I can change my intonation and make it a direct statement saying, I am water. For the word who and the word water are the same word. And like a drop of water, I long to, it's my life's course, to connect to other drops of water and continue my journey until I find myself in a collective pool, such as today. I haven't always been so open sharing my whakapapa, my story. Have you ever lied about who you are? Ever found yourself walking a lie, unable to regain the truth, a real sense of identity? Maybe you have denied a connection so that you Feel like you're something greater, something bigger than perhaps you really are. This is a serious question I'm asking you. I have. Let me tell you a story. One day, there's an eel swimming down the river. We call him Tuna. And Tuna is swimming around the river when he hears a desperate cry for help. Please help me! Intrigued by this curious voice, Tuna moves towards a bank where he finds an overturned log on which is trapped a great big brown 
poo. That's an English word for tutai. <laughs> tutai looks at Tuna with his big brown eyes and pleads, Cousin, please save me. Set me free to run with the current, and one day I will repay you of kindness. Tuna is absolutely disgusted. You're nothing but a stinky poo. There's no way I'm going to even touch you. As for you repaying my kindness, ugh. As for being my cousin, you are no relation of mine. And so Tuna turned up his nose and he continued to swim. Not far from this point, Tuna is caught by a fisherman. He's processed, he's eaten, and the next day he's reincarnated. <laughs> Tuna now finds himself floating down the river. Unable to swim against the current, he's washed to a bank where he's caught on an overturned log and meets a familiar set of big brown eyes who greet him. Cousin, <laughs> I knew we'd meet again. <laughs> Serves you right, Tuna. You see, if Tuna had acknowledged his connection with Tutai, regardless of how diminutive his status is, he would have become a hero in our story. And his life would have been saved. If Tutai floated first, a fisherman would have had the crappiest meal of his life. <laughs> That's a humorous story, right? I want to share just one more story before I begin to share with you who I am. In New Zealand, we have a little bird. His name is the Pipi Pararua, the shining cuckoo. And in the spring, Pipi Pararua will fly to New Zealand and land in the nest of a bird we call the Riro Riro, the grey warbler. When he lands in this nest, he'll kick out some of the grey warbler's eggs and proceed to lay his own. He'll then move on. And when the grey warbler, the Riro Riro, comes back to his nest, he'll incubate these eggs, nurture the young, and when Pipi Farauro grows up, he simply moves on, never to return, never to acknowledge the connection he has with the Riro Riro. Don't think it's a nasty little bird. He's just a bird. It's hard for us not to judge, but we're in no position to judge. In essence, the Pipi Farauro is colonizing. Who am I? Who am I to say these things? I'm Dutch. I tell you, it's true. Four out of four of my grandparents are Dutch. They moved to New Zealand after the Second World War, after Europe was left, ruined. They'd received a pamphlet that showed New Zealand as being a land where the water was clean, the air was fresh, forests were full of life, and communities were healthy, strong, and connected. Wanting a better life for their children and grandchildren, they moved to Invercargill. <laughs> the day my father proposed to my mother, he did what every Dutch man does. He promised her something long and hard the evening that they were married. And so it was that my mother received the name, the long, hard name, Mrs. Lambertus Jacobus Henricus Van Real. Here I am today. I was fortunate in that I grew up spending a lot of time with my grandparents. In their house, I was surrounded by the Dutch language, the Dutch culture, Dutch music, Dutch food, Dutch everything. And in this place, I felt connected. I felt unique, special. I thought I was part of a real cool club. I was. The Dutch Club. But as I grew up and became older, I started hearing these different terms of identity being bantered around in the street. Kiwi. We're all Kiwi. 
To be a Kiwi, you need no real criteria. All you need to do is live in New Zealand and feel good about it. Kia ora Kiwis! <laughs> Pākehā. Pākehā is, has a beautiful history which I don't have time to share with you. However, the Pākehā seem to be non-indigenous members of New Zealand. You had to speak English and you had to have been here for quite a while. Māori. Indigenous people. People from New Zealand. They have marae. They have a different language. How the heck did I fit into this crew? I asked my oma, my grandmother, she assured me, Schat about your Dutch. Oh, phew. I asked my friends, they said, bro, you're Kiwi, yes. <laughs> I asked my Maori friends, they say, oh, bro, you're Pākehā. I asked my Pākehā friends, well, they say, I always thought you were Māori. <laughs> How was I going to connect? At 12 years old, I began my high school education. It was compulsory in the first year of high school for the Māori language to be included in my curriculum. Being from a bilingual background, I had a natural affinity to pick up languages, and I enjoyed the Māori language. I found my curiosity brought me into the Māori room every lunchtime where a group of boys were practicing in the cultural arts, weaponry, haka, song, dance, and everyone accepted me. It wasn't an issue that I wasn't Māori. You see, my legs, my skinny white legs, they look awesome when I start to stomp. My white face, when I start to hucker. <laughs> it goes bright red. That's awesome. <laughs> and I felt like I had a place in this community. But that year, my grandmother passed away. My grandfather had passed away the year before both from my father's side of the family. And these ones to me were my real link, my real link to my identity. And when they passed away, I felt this huge void inside me, almost sucking me into it. I'll never forget the kindness shown to me at my grandmother's funeral when the Māori teacher, after me only being a part of that group for six months, showed up to the funeral with all of the cultural group, not just to pay their respects to my grandmother, but to show me that I had a place now in that community, that they were willing to stand behind me, beside me, and to continue nurturing me. And so it was. Every other weekend, I was picked up there were a small group of boys and a large group of old people, and we were taken away to special places, taught how to gather food and medicine from the ocean and from the forest. We were taught in traditional histories, tribal laws, and I received the best part of my education from these people. However, when I came home, the perception of what I'd been doing was a little bit weird. Been to one of those military camps. What are you learning Maori for, bro? The only place that's going to get you is jail. Maori represent the highest crime rate, sickness rate, unemployment rate in this country. What do you want to learn that for? I want to know how I fit into this place. I want to find a connection that predates you old fogies, so that I'm confident standing here. Waste of time. You should learn Asian. There's good money in learning Asian, you know. I don't want to learn another culture for money. I'm after a connection. You know what, I want to learn Dutch too. I want to know where I'm from. What a bloody dreamer, waste of time. Where's that gonna get you? What am I, how? So who the bloody hell am I? You're a Kiwi son. Oh, kia ora. I suddenly realized, 
we're going crazy. My family, who was so Dutch, telling me, it's enough just to speak English. Fit in. If you want to learn another language, let there be money involved. If you want to make friends with a group of people, let it be for something that you can get out of them. I didn't want to be that little bird, the pee pee fororo, that just comes and lays my eggs in somebody else's nest. 16 years old, I was somewhat fluent in Māori by this stage. The amount of love that was given to me by the Māori people was overwhelming. In fact, I'd won the regional Māori high school speech competitions. Before I had a chance to go to the national comps, I had one hell of an argument with my mum. Being 16, the natural course of resolve was for me to simply run away. So I packed my bag and I started to make my way down to my auntie's house, not 10 blocks from our house. On the way, I met an old Māori lady. I'd never seen her before. Definitely Māori, surely not from town. To cut a long story short, we proceeded to talk in te reo Māori. She was so impressed with me. She said, where are you from? I said, oh, I'm from here. I'm Ngaitahu. Now, Ngaitahu are the indigenous people from the southern area. Oh, what a fantastic specimen of Ngaitahu aristocracy you are, boy. I am staying at the marae with a group of people. Would you like to come with me? Ah. Mum would never find me there. Hell yeah, I'm with you. And that was it. We were down to the marae where I proceeded to tell these good people 24 hours of utter crap. You see, the marae is the cornerstone of Maori identity. It's an ancestral house. And so I walked into that house and I told them, this is my ancestor. His name is Te Puru Nui Te the tikonui o te puru, which means the great crap of the giant bull. And this one here is te heke ngā mai o te parawete te rangi, the great descending of celestial verbal diarrhea. They loved it. Oh, he is an aristocrat. <laughs> the next day, however, one of the men said, bro, does mum know where you are? <laughs> no, she doesn't. Look, we want to keep you with us. But you've got to tell mum. Tell mum where you are. So I went into the kitchen. Hi, mum. Jeremy, I've been worried sick about you. I'm sorry, mum. Look, I'm down at the marae. All right, love, I'm on my way. Ah! You don't know what that means. The truth is coming to the marae. I got nowhere to run. I was taken into a little room where there were a group of people with huge sheets of paper in front of them, and they're writing out their whakapapa, their genealogy, eh? This one's connected to that one and that one, and this person's whakapapa connected to that person's whakapapa, and here's my piece of paper, and I find myself wiping out every second name in my own family tree to try and make myself fit in. Heck, you were, technically you're my second cousin. How the hell is that happening? Mum had arrived at the marae, and she proceeded to have a conversation with the old lady who picked me up. The old lady said to Mum, you've been denying him contact with his people. Your son doesn't really know who he is. I said, what a load of crap, my son knows who he is. Well, obviously not. You should have seen this performance that he's been doing for the last 24 hours. <laughs> Seemed a bit funny to Mum. She said, Jeremy's ancestors are all Dutch. I mean, four sides of this boy's family tree are from Holland. Uh, he's so Dutch, he sweats salty licorice. <laughs> if you've got any, I'd appreciate some at interval. <laughs> and the old lady's jaw dropped. It became like a telepathic message that spread throughout the marae. He's not Maori, he's Dutch. And as I left, one of the men said to me, bro, who's your iwi again? Ngai tahu. Another one. Who's your iwi? Ngai tahu. I was so deep in lies I couldn't pull out. It wasn't until one minute before the national speeches that I came clean. I grabbed the MC, said, I'm not Ngai tahu, I'm Dutch. He introduced me. Ladies and gentlemen, 
Please welcome a role model for all of New Zealand, a descendant of the Dutch, our only non-Māori speaker in the Māori uh, section of these speeches. Please welcome Jeremy Van Riel. And at that moment, I felt my ancestors above me. I had my Māori community behind me, supporting me. And I made a firm decision. I'm not just flying through this place. I'm here to stay. I want my kids to grow up here and have a place. I connect not just a free ticket from my ancestors. I don't just connect to a land that I can move from. I connect to my people. And I'm working bloody hard to connect to your people too. I acknowledge you. I acknowledge the extensions of you all. And once again, I greet you with every single thing that I have within me. Kita faya up tell Marama. Tihe Mauriora.